Well, ladies and gentlemen, the first pre-release for Minecraft Java Edition 1.16, the Nether update, has been released. 1.16 pre-release 1 comes to you with changes to zombie piglin anger mechanics, new data pack options, new visual settings, and many bug fixes. My name is Sly Slime, I'm here to guide you through all the changes in this pre-release. Before we get into the details of this pre-release, let me warn you, there are several critical issues in this one and a second pre-release has actually now been released before this video is even done. I will be getting out with a second video to detail that one, but do know that opening worlds in this pre-release can corrupt them. Anyway, with that said, let's start out with mobs and those new anger mechanics. Zombified piglins will no longer attack innocent bystanders. That means if you hit a zombified piglin and then leave other players nearby will not get targeted. This also fixes a bug where if a mob hit a zombified piglin and then that mob died, the zombified piglins will no longer attack players around. Another change is that zombified piglins stop being angry if the player they had targeted dies within range of them. That means that if you anger a zombified piglin and then get killed by it, then you can safely come back and pick up your gear. This is part of a change that makes anger consistent across all neutral mobs. This means that for piglins, bees, wolves, polar bears, golems, endermen and zombified piglins, none of them will attack innocent players as well as the offending player. None of them will stop being angry at the target if the player logs out or switches dimensions and all of them will stop being angry at the target if that player dies within range of them. Together with this, there are two new added game rules. One is called Universal Anger. This is disabled by default, and if you turn it on, it makes angered neutral mobs attack any nearby player. That is, it works just like Zombified Piglins did before if you turn this game rule on. The other game rule is called Forgive Dead Players. This is enabled by default and if you turn it off, it makes angered neutral mobs keep being angry at you even if they kill you or if you die. That is, if you turn this game rule off, then the game will behave like it did before for zombified piglins. A final part of this fix is that all non-civilized swarming mobs, such as zombified piglins, bees and wolves, now obey the same rules when it comes to stealth kills, that is one hit kills. None of these mobs will now spread anger when hit with enough force to kill them instantly. Other mob related changes in this version. When any villager is struck by lightning, the witch that it gets converted to will no longer despawn. This extends the change from a previous version where the witches would not despawn if you had traded with the villagers. This behavior now applies to all villagers. Another fix for villagers in the previous snapshot that they could become fixated on a single potential job site and never stop tracking that one site. That has been fixed in this version. Chicken jockeys could not despawn at all in the last few snapshots. That has been fixed in this pre-release. And a fix for small mobs. They could get stuck in fence corners, trying to move outside and not understanding that they couldn't walk through the fence. That bug has been fixed in this version. Snow golems and the striders are now damaged by splash and the lingering water bottles. The calculation for bees of how they aged when inside of a hive or nest was broken and that is fixed in this pre-release. Changes to behaviors for piglins, they now automatically attack withers on sight and some changes to hoglins as well. In certain situations, hoglins didn't avoid warped fungus that has been fixed in this version, and baby hoglins will now follow adult hoglins around. Baby hoglins and the zoglins also had their heads floating slightly above their neck, and a retreating baby hoglin would sometimes pathfind to the wrong direction that is also fixed. Changes to gameplay in this pre-release. You can now milk cows and mushrooms in creative mode, and you can also get stew from mushrooms in creative mode. Change to the behavior of a bucket in creative mode. If you use an empty bucket on water in creative mode, you will now get a bucket of water. If you already had a bucket of water in your inventory, then you will not get an extra one. It will only give you one. And a fix for a bug in creative mode. If you got hit by a wither skull, then you would still get the wither effect even in creative mode. If you slept in a bed, then you weren't properly positioned at the center of a block afterwards. And the soul speed effect would stay even if you levitated or flew off of soul sand or soul soil. 
The new Nether Challenge advancements now grant experience points. You will get 100 XP for the Cover Me in Debris advancement and 500 XP for the Hot Tourist Destinations advancement. The 2x2 advancements now requires also breeding donkeys and mules. And you can now get the parrots and the bats from breeding donkeys or mules. The title text for the advancement Who is Cutting Onions now has a lowercase i. A bunch of fixes have been done to spawn eggs if you aimed at a mob that could be ridden and also used a spawn egg at the same time then you'd get the wrong effect, sometimes spawning two mobs and sometimes both spawning a mob and getting on to ride. If you blow up a respawn anchor underwater by trying to use it in a non-nether dimension then it will no longer destroy blocks. You could also set your spawn point inside of dangerous blocks that is fixed and the nether gold ore is no longer grey on a map. The subtitle for stripping logs and stems has changed, it is now axe scrapes, and there are now toast pop-ups for the smithing recipes. Once you get a netherite ingot, it will show that you now unlocked smithing recipes. Visual changes in this version. There's a new fabulous graphics option in addition to the already existing fast and fancy ones. The fabulous option uses per pixel blending layers for some additional transparency effects. And in addition to this, you can now see the detailed descriptions for the graphics options when you hover over the button. In addition to this, if you changed settings that would apply after closing the video settings menu, then they didn't take effect if you changed the full screen setting that has also been fixed. In addition to this, a large number of fixes for problems that appeared in the previous snapshot as an effect of the experimental render changes. These include lightning bolts not rendering at all, the dragon win animation not rendering at all, entities, block entities and items rendered black on certain graphics cards, black hitboxes causing transparency issues, clouds rendering in front of everything or in the wrong place, items rendering in front of everything, translucent items being rendered wrong, the player's point of view being entirely upside down for certain players, and the particles rendering in the wrong order as well. In addition to this, a couple of liquid rendering fixes, waterlogged blocks with a full surface would cause sea fighting when looking at them from a distance that is fixed in this version, and ice bordering water also caused sea fighting that is also fixed. Bone mealing kelp would cause particles to appear in the wrong place, and speaking of particle, there are a large number of fixes to precision issues causing particles to appear in the wrong place when at high coordinates. In addition to this, there's also a large number of fixes to places where the hand animation would play in the wrong way, either play when it shouldn't or not play when it should. Let's talk about world and world generation changes in this version. There's a fix for a bug that appeared in the previous snapshot where some structures loot chests would be empty. There's a new data pack selection option for creating a world. You can now select data packs when the world is created and have the data packs loaded before the world starts. Data packs will also be validated so you can no longer set up and load an invalid set of data packs. In addition, the recreate world or the copy world option will also copy the data packs present in the source world. Speaking of the pack user interface, packs can now be dropped directly onto the data and resource pack selection screens. If you drop a zip file or a directory, it will be copied directly into the appropriate place, either the resource packs directory or the data pack directory of the world in question. This brings us nicely to the technical changes and specifically let's start with the changes to data packs. The game will now detect critical data pack issues like missing required tags and prevent a world from being loaded if that is the case. Another fix is that functions would load before entity tags did and validate them causing loading errors even though there were no actual problems in the function. There's a new type of recipe in this version, it is smithing recipes. You can now add or change smithing recipes through data packs. A smithing type recipe has three fields. One is base, which is an ingredient specifier, specifying the item to be upgraded. For instance, this could be a diamond sword in one of the vanilla recipes. The next field is addition, also an ingredient specifying the valid items to trigger the upgrade. For all of the vanilla recipes, this is a netherite ingot. And the final field is result, which is an item specifying the resulting type of the upgraded item. All smithing recipes will convert the base item into the result type, but copy the data tag from the incoming item. 
Another change to data packs is that they can now also contain custom dimension settings. Keep in mind that this is still an experimental feature and worlds with data packs containing dimension settings will be marked as experimental when you try to load them. There are two new possible subfolders for this in the data pack structure. They are dimension underscore type and the dimension. Files in these folders are JSON files that currently have the following. The type files have the dimension properties like ultra warm and whether it has a ceiling or skylight and so on. The dimension has the generator settings for that including how to choose biomes and potentially seeds in addition to a reference for which dimension type it is. Together with this, a spelling error has been fixed in one of the fields for custom world generation. Temperature is now spelled correctly, and a fix has been done to a problem with the data pack enabled list output. Changes for advancements in data packs. The serious dedication advancement had the wrong file name that has been changed. It is now obtain netherite ho. So if you want to replace that, you will have to replace that file. And the throne item picked up by entity advancement trigger didn't work for players. That has also been fixed. A change for resource pack makers. Crimson and warped doors are now considered transparent, so their textures can now have transparent pixels. Changes and fixes to commands in this version. Lightning bolts can now be targeted by entity selectors. In an earlier snapshot, the loot command had stopped working with fishing loot tables. That is fixed in this version. In the previous snapshot, you could use multiplayer commands on a single player world. That has been fixed in this pre-release. The Minecraft tick tag now works again when joining a world. And the locate biome result message has been adapted so that it now works with all biome names. In addition to this, several fixes for stability and performance, including several crash fixes. And those were all the changes in Minecraft 1.16 pre-release 1. Keep in mind that the pre-releases and snapshots are testing versions. They are less well tested than full releases and can contain critical issues. Also keep in mind that any world opened on this pre-release can never be downgraded safely to a previous release. So if you want to try this version, do so on a backup of your world or on a separate test world. If you want to try it out but you don't know how to, then click on the link on the card on the video right now or in the video description. That'll take you to a tutorial video about how to play the latest Minecraft snapshot or pre-release. And that was all I had for you this time. I hope you found this update video useful, and if you did, please help me out in return, leave a like, and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then please subscribe to this channel, where I make update videos for every new snapshot, pre-release, or release of Minecraft. And don't forget to hit that bell icon and select all to get notified when new videos are out. My name is Slice Slime, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.